Hey, good morning everybody. It's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Tuesday, October 20th. Yay! I don't know what that means for all of you, but my kids have one more day of school and then they're off Thursday and Friday. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a nice relaxing weekend. That would be nice. Uh, now here's everything that's still going on with the satellite as well as uh, Tropical Storm Epsilon. But everybody pretty much knows the track and everything that's going on with that. So this isn't about that. Uh, even though there is uh, an area of, of activity uh, moving across the Western Caribbean right now, there's not expected uh, anything coming out of it as far as getting rotation. It only has 10% chance, and honestly, I don't think anything is going to come out of it. However, there, the 12Z intensity track is still showing that there's still possibilities, but I'll stay on top of that. As for right now, though, there's nothing showing up for that. Now, that, what I want to talk about is not Epsilon and not this uh, low wave that's getting sheared off. Down here in the right bottom hand corner, there's there's an uh, area of, of low pressure of storms, tropical wave, coming across the MDR. And it, it has some resistance. I'll show you that. But it is very strong in intensity. And some tracks uh, show that it actually does make it across. Now, here's a good look at it, uh, close-ups in, in IR, so you can see the formation of it. It's trying to get an area of, of circle right there of rotation, but it's not getting it quite yet. Uh, the reason behind it is because it's running across wind shear. Also, it's running across some dry air problems. Now, you can see the wind shear going across it right here, the high clouds going opposite direction as a storm. You can see it coming off of Brazil as well. Uh, here's a better look at it with the dry air. So, as the storms come in, across the MDR, it's running across the wind shear and the dry air pocket, and then after that, it has an even bigger pocket of dry air that's protecting the islands in Puerto Rico. Uh, but this is what it is dealing with right now. It's fighting into it. It has a lot of lightning. That's what the yellow is. That's lightning strikes. It has a lot of lightning strikes. It has a lot of uh, intensity involved with it, but you can see the wind shear just shearing it off, fighting it, plus the dry air that it has to come across to even make it across. However, the 6Z does show that, down, if you look down here, it does make it through. And the 12Z also shows a little, a little northern push, which makes it more sensitive uh, to what really would happen because the wind shear will, would push it more northern uh, to get past the wind shear. But the dry air should choke it a lot weaker than the way it looks right there. But as far as what we have, as far as these temperatures, y'all, we have some temperatures coming along and it's going to be cold. Like now, what you're looking at is you see your, your 70s in the orange. Uh, let me get it going and show you. You have your 70s in the your orange. Your, your red is the freezing temperatures. Uh, the, if you ever see a shade of blue, that is like right there. The blue is really cold. You're talking teens, almost down to zero degrees. Uh, but the, the red is, is below freezing. It's 32, 32 or below. So most of these are 29s. The orange you see is the 60s, and you'll even see the 70s. Uh, and a dark orange, like when you get towards the tip of Florida. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because pretty soon we have some really cold air coming across. Now, we have this air coming across now with the snowfall. And then as you see, some really cold air starts to come in. And this, if you look on the top left, you'll see this is on the 25th. And if you're curious about what these colors are, this is negative temperatures. This is higher elevations, uh, yet it does leak in, into uh, parts of Montana. Uh, and, and Wyoming. But if you look over here, also in North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, you get very small temperatures. I'm talking two degrees, seven degrees. Still, that's not what, what I brought you to here to see. Let me show you. It gets even worse. This goes way south. Now, if you watch as the days go along and we get along the 27th, this is at seven o'clock in the morning. And, and these are the temperatures for everybody so far. This, you still got four degrees. Uh, or the teens in Minnesota. Right below that, you have Iowa. Iowa, you're going to be in the very single digits. It's very cold. Plus, you got Colorado. You got Wyoming. Everybody's in the freezing temperatures as far as Texas all the way down, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. But as we get even further along, it stretches even further south. So we go into the 27th. And if you notice that this is 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to show you there's a good point. Now, as we go to the 28th, the freezing temperatures stretch way down south. So the 27th it goes on the left side, and then the 28th goes all the way down, way down to Louisiana, 
and I'm talking cold. This is cold for the South. If, if you're not from the South, it has very low, low, uh, very high humidity, and, and these temperatures you really feel them. We're talking 30s and 40s uh, for most of y'all down here. And even in the northern Florida, it's going to be in the 60s. Texas, you're going to be really cold. You're going to be around the edge of freezing temperatures, and all we need is a good rainstorm uh, to come on through and give us snow right at the right time. As we go towards the end of the month, it moves no more to the northeast, and it gets more out of that cycle, and we get back to our warm states again for a little bit longer before the winter officially kicks in. But I tell you, this is some cold temperatures, and if it does hit the way it looks like it's going to hit, there's a possibility if we can get some precipitation at that time that we could actually have a big winter storm. So it has to be further investigated, but this is uh, pretty, pretty cold temperatures, especially diving that far south, guys. Now, since all the craziness pretty much has halted for a, a season, it seems like, thank God, I'm going to go ahead and get us back on our, our story of reading through the whole Bible. And if you haven't uh, been here before, just, re just remember that this is something we do here. We're reading the whole thing, the first book of Moses, second book of Moses. i got Ezra. I'm going to be getting that coming. And plus we have uh, the New Testament, of course. And we, last time we were on 39, so we're on Genesis 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers, and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard, into the prison, the, pr the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning, and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's office, officers that were with him in the ward of his lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it, it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hands, and I took the grapes, and pressed them into Pharaoh's cups, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hands. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine hand and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee. And shew kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket there was all of the manner of baked meats for Pharaoh. And the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree. And the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler, and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had, had interpreted to, to him. Yet, yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. Amen, guys.
All right, so tomorrow we are on 41. And tomorrow, today is actually 50 with my kids, because I do it with my kids every day, of course. And today's their, their last chapter of Genesis, so they're, they're excited to get on to a new one. <laughs> so I'm reading them, reading with them as well. So I hope you all have a blessed day today, guys. seems like nothing's coming out of it so far as far as tropical activity. However, if you think that something like this could get past that dry air and that wind shear, let me know what you think about it. It's still a little bit of ways, but we'll check. God bless you all. Hope you have a great day today. It is a beautiful Tuesday. All glory does go to God. Amen, guys.